Well, Bhavdi, I think it's important to start off by taking a look at the extent of the challenge. We, we were talking about it as waiting in the dark. And that's still, unfortunately, the case for millions of people. They are there, they are, they're facing organ failure. They know that they can be saved, they can have a renewed lease on life if somebody would donate. Mm. But there are not that many people out there on the donor list. Yeah, it's a real challenge for us. Um, you know, the data points are quite significant and, and staggering when you look at the rest of the world and where we are in India today. Even with, and there's been a significant shift in terms of the number of donors, the number of transplants that are actually taking place, but nonetheless, less than 1% of our population today is an organ donor candidate. I think that um, what's happening is, I think there's a lot of education taking place. I think there's a good partnership taking place between the private sector, the public sector, the government, and private um, NGOs as well who are actually leading, leading this movement forward. The facts are that um, even as we sit here today, a half a million people die every year waiting for an organ. And that's a huge, huge challenge for us. Yeah. So if you think about what's happening, if you think about the disease burden in India today, and we, we, we know what's happening with, with cancer, we know what's happening with cardiac disease, we know with all the things that are happening. The reality is this is an area that we can make a huge difference. Yeah. I don't think it's a difference that, um, that any one of us can do individually. I think it's exactly this collective platform that will help But us. I think it's also important to touch on the fact that a campaign, and if you create awareness, and if you say the right things, and you get people to understand why it's important, a change can happen, and a change can happen very fast. I just want to turn to you. Uh, you know, if you're looking at NOTO, which is, of course, in a sense, a centralized repository now of data, the numbers that you, that you are actually seeing are staggering. The number of people whom you have in your registry has gone up by how much? Uh, basically, we started with probably 9,000 plus uh, uh, donation, and uh, now it has turned up, you know, around 13 lakh. And our honorable uh, health minister said that the target is 20 lakh this year. And we are approaching this target. You'll be glad to know that. 9,000 to 13, 13 lakhs is a very, very big jump. Amount. And how much time did that happen? In? Yeah, because, you know, that, that uh, these NGOs were scattered. So I time at best to involve all these NGOs who are doing these activities for the last 20, 25 years or so. Now we have got a cumulative data in our database system in, in NOTO so that we know exactly where the, uh, what is the picture exactly. Now, initially it was not there, sir. Now, even you will surprise to know that the uh, 20,000 BSF people have uh, donation, uh, had, uh, you know, pledges and they are every month they are sending us, you know, around 500 plus uh, pledges from uh, those, they're saving the life of, uh, you know, us also. The people are aware now. We are doing it, uh, you know, because we got a lot of myth and misconception and other things, religions right. and all that, despite the, the fact that the people are coming in a big way to uh, aware, uh, for awareness also. Pallavi, uh, uh, you and other NGOs <coughs> who are working in the field, I mean, this is a centralization of that data. So in a, help, it, in a sense, it helps to have that list of people. But are you also seeing a lot more people now starting to come forward, starting to realize why it is so important, how you can change people's lives? Definitely, there has been a significant increase both in terms of sign-ups and in terms of donations. I mean, if you look at 2012, we had only about 200 donors and last year we had close to 800 donors. So, so you know, this, I, I feel we are in the right direction both in terms of people who are pledging and for people yeah. who are actually going ahead and taking this decision. So, fair to say perhaps that it's, a, it's that we are still at a very low base, but yes. at least things so are we starting at least to are moving in the, in the right, right direction. direction. Yeah. So I just want to come to you because you're, of course, really the pioneer in this field and you're the person who's perhaps done you know, more work in this entire area than anyone else whom I can think of. Um, when it comes to the new technologies that are coming up, like what you are pioneering in, being able to keep organs for a slightly longer period of time, it's happening elsewhere, Australia, other countries have been able to do it. What sort of a difference does that happen? Because it's one thing is to have a donor and to get the, get the organ, it then has to be got in time to the recipient. And that's a See, the, 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 uh, the challenge in the organs with which we work, in the heart and the lungs, is that they are um, not very forgiving of uh, what we call ischemic times. I mean, they have to be implanted within four hours or six hours, in the case of a lung, after the organ is donated. And now what we see is, uh, at least in our state of Tamil Nadu, organs are being donated in smaller towns. So it's one thing for an organ to be donated, nothing to shift it to a center where a transplant takes place. And uh, the infrastructure, the social infrastructure in terms of flights or helicopters is not as widely prevalent. The other thing is traditionally we've always stored these organs in cold eyes. So there is a matter of suspense when it lands in your place, whether it will actually perform as well as it 
was when it was stopped. So we now have a system of keeping it perfused and assessing its function prior to implantation so that it um, not only keeps the organs viable for a much longer period, so in principle you could transport over much longer distances, but also to verify and ensure that the organ is working well before you put it in so that the outcomes are very much more predictable than they used to be. Right. Now, to say it, um, in a sense, there are some states which are getting it right, Tamil Nadu obviously being the key example, but there are others also. What are the sort of lessons that the rest of the country needs to learn? What are they doing correctly, which therefore others should pick up on and saying, well, we need to learn from that? You know, now, not just Tamil Nadu, we have examples uh, in s uh, smaller cities, non-metro non cities. Indoor, we right, have, yeah. we started with Jaipur, we have Indore, we have uh, Pune, and so many coming up like that. So basically, what we have to realize is that organ donation doesn't happen on its own. You need a combination of uh, factors. The first thing that is required is leadership. Somebody in a senior position has to communicate to everyone the importance of organ donation. Whether it is a hospital or a city or a state, the, it has to come from the top. The, it has to be infectious. Everybody has to understand the need for it. Mm. Once that happens, the stakeholders tend to fall into place. And the most important people in this entire scene are the critical care teams. The critical care people throughout the country have to take ownership of the organ donation program. And organ donation has to be a routine part of you know, end of life care. The family must realize that their loved one got the best possible care in the world. Despite that, that person did not survive and then the teams approach them about organ donation. Right. I think it's important to take that a little forward because there are myths, there are reasons why. Why is it that everyone is not signing up and saying, I want to be an organ donor? It is partly because some of the myths and that we've been trying very hard to dispel, like is it going to be a cost for the donor to be somehow coming out and making the donation? Are they not going to get adequate care because the hospital has got an interest in giving the donor? These are some of the myths. They're wrong, but they're myths. And it's important to set these at rest, I think. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, when we look at, um, in, in, at Fortis, for example, we've actually spent a good bit of time focusing on education. And our first thought was that, um, that you educate the, um, the patients, their families, to help them understand what's involved. But we also have to educate our own system, our own doctors and nurses in terms of how you talk to people, what information do you share. So you're right, I think it's a series of myths, a series of concerns around it that am I going to get the best possible care? Is there something that's going to happen? Is there a cost component? So I think slowly, by all the things that we're hearing now, I think slowly we're starting to shed away at them. But again, just starting, long way to go. What are, the, what are the major questions that you're asked when you're trying to tell someone you should sign up to be an organ donor? What do you hear? Why do people say, I don't want to do it? So in, in all the time that I've spent speaking to groups of people, whether it's a public awareness talk or sitting across a family who's just lost a loved one and I'm talking to them about organ donation, their concerns are very real. Who's going to get the organ? What stake does this hospital have? Are they going to misuse the organs? How long will it take for me to get the body back for last rites? What would the body look like once the organs are retrieved? Believe you me, not once in my entire interaction with the general public, anybody has ever brought up, you know, if I, no, if I give my organs in this life, uh, I'll be... In fact, when I put up that slide, it always generates a lot of laughter in the group. So people, yeah, so like, we have to give... Yeah. Those other myths, you know, we, those uh, we have to credit the myths and all public with more intelligence been, now. They are, those have been yeah. done. Like the, अपनी जवानी देता हूँ अपने प्राण